Excellent. Right, so welcome everybody. We've got another one of our video conferencing thing going to try and sort of convince you to join us in Antarctica. It's exactly one year from today that we'll be leaving from Ushaya. We'll be arriving in Ushaya in exactly one year from today. Uh, joining myself and Andrew, who you know very well, is we've got Angie, who's the director of Ice Tracks. Um, she, she's the one that's caused us all this heartache and convinced us to go to the ends of the world. <laughs> and we've got uh, Christina, who's the client, client relations. So they're going to be just having a quick, maybe 10 minute chat with us, giving us some idea of what to expect in the next uh, year, what, what, what we should be enjoying. Absolutely. Welcome, ladies, from uh, across the ocean and different time zones. We, we really appreciate you joining us uh, to have a little chat. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. It's, it's great to see you guys. And, um, and I'm so excited that you'll be going down to Antarctica because, you know, it's completely life-changing. Um, and it's extraordinary and um, I really implore everyone who can make it to go down to Antarctica and thrill that um, that you guys will will be going down and seeing this extraordinary continent. Thanks, Angie. We we can't wait. It's been a life and vision for us to get down there. Yeah. And to be working with you guys is an absolute delight. And we can't wait to get down there. Uh, a little bit negative about this whole COVID thing, and I'm sure um, you guys are suffering from the same thing. But I'm 100% sure that by this time next year, everybody's got to receive their vaccination shots. And hopefully we'll be back to business as usual. Christina, do you want to say and introduce yourself a little bit? And Yes, of course. Well, um, although we had quite a, a, a tough year in 2020 because obviously um, we had cancellations and uh, major operators in Antarctica decided to cancel the 2020-2021 season, they are all um, working on their protocols uh, pretty much ready to start operating in October 2021 for the the next Antarctic season. So with the vaccination uh, campaign going so strong around the world, we are really hoping that everything will be back to this new normality. Uh, and by March 2022, we are all set to go and we are expecting to have a wonderful journey and offer the best service to our clients and your clients, of course. So um, protocols will be in place. Um, testing, everything, everything will, 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 will be in place to offer our clients uh, the most, well, the safest of conditions uh, on board the ship. Fantastic. So one That's of the things I, I read about in, in your updated email to us is that the ship will be putting on more dining areas to make sure that the congestion in, in the dining areas isn't, isn't uh, a problem. I think it's a great idea. Exactly. Exactly, yeah. yeah. There will and be also obviously the passages be... in the ship sort of one way passage, so you're not walking against the flow of everybody else. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. They are they are working on changing a few things um, about life on board to make it safe for everyone. But um, for example, dining um, um, lunch times and dining times are not going to be buffet like they used to be but they are going to be with a set menu so your food will be um, brought to, to the table instead of you having to mix with people uh, some common areas are going to be uh, limited to a certain amount of people but life on board shouldn't be disrupted uh, too much that's what yeah. we are I think it's fantastic I, I read that document you sent us and if anybody is interested in it, please drop us an email and I'll forward it on to you. Um, uh, admin at bushbaby.co.za. And uh, we'll gladly send you the document. And it really does cover quite a few points on how they are working so hard to make this thing safe for us. And I'm sure that by March 2022, you know, after two solid years of COVID, I think we'll be on top of it. And I, I'm hoping this will be a whole month event by then. Yes. Yeah. And as things keep on changing daily, I think conditions are going to become more flexible as well. This is really the protocols we have at the moment uh, are very hard because the situation at the moment is this one. But in a couple of months time or four or five months time, we are expecting things to become a little bit more flexible. So everything should relax as well. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think I think it's the nature of this is that it's dynamic, you know, and we what what, what news headlines ring true today are completely different in a week's time or a month's time. And yeah. we just need to, we yeah. need to realize that and, and stop worrying. Well, so if we just think of where we were this time last year, we hadn't even started our first lockdown yet. That's right. And not only are we not, no longer in lockdown and our borders are open in South Africa. But we've got the vaccine and we're busy vac vaccinating everybody. I mean, we've come so far in a year. In well, a what, year. what will we be in another year? Hopefully, hopefully yeah. we'll be on top of this thing and there'll be no issues to worry about at all. I think so. And I think one I should mention that in the really unlikely event that something went wrong and the ship operator pulled the plug, you know, everyone's money is safe. Everyone has been looked after. There's this huge safety net. Um, and so everyone financially will, you know, be looked after. There'll be many other voyages on offer. Um, and um, the, the ship operators have really been so flexible um, because this whole um, pandemic is for them has been an unknown. Um, and because they've had to cancel this season um, and they've carried you know many people forward they have been absolutely brilliant about looking after everyone so I, d I don't think um, people uh, need to be afraid that they're going to be you know financially shortchanged or or anything like that and really it is in re the unlikely event I mean we really hope this time next year um, we'll just be back to um, to the normal voyages, the voyages that we, Christina and I, are really used to. Um, and um, we have enormous faith in our ship operators. They have, they have been so supportive and really have put so much work into looking after everyone, making, they'll make sure everyone's safe. Um, so, you know, we, we feeling pretty relaxed about it now. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I, I think from us, we, this is a fairly new venture for us. You know, this is going to be our maiden voyage into Antarctica. But for you guys, this is this is all hat. I mean, when you do this on a regular basis, um, Angie, you you've got two books published on on down there. Eh? You want to talk yeah. about that with you? Yes. Well, um, my it, it's it is really interesting because when I went down to Antarctica in two thousand and five, um, I went down purely as a tourist. Uh, and to do some research on Antarctica because I was very interested in uh, this man called Frank Wilde who was Shackleton's right-hand man and who'd actually uh, died um, in, in South Africa. In fact, Andrew came to one of my talks there and, um, and uh, I started researching him, wanted to go down to Antarctica to understand a little bit about this extraordinary continent. Um, and that's when I met um, the other director, Caro. I actually blagged my way down two more times as a journalist um, and really caught the bug about Antarctica. And so the, the first book, actually I'd written another book on present day explorers, but um, this book, um, The Quest for Frank Wilde, um, came out a few years ago. And this Shackleton's right-hand man, the, the only man to go down to Antarctica on five occasions, and um, died in South Africa. And he was very much lost. Um, well, he's, first of all, his remains were lost. And then his, everyone had forgotten uh, this extraordinary um, um, man who, who knew so much about Antarctica. And people had forgotten about him, and he was always he was described as a drifter and um, an alcoholic and friendless. But I researched him for eight years, and then um, I found his remains uh, in Bramfontein, the cemetery, in in something called a columbarium underneath the chapel, and um, ice tracks took his remains to be um, buried. At, uh, alongside Shackleton and Gritviken in South Georgia. Wow. So that was, yeah, it was an incredible story. And, um, and the BBC made a one hour um, program on the book. Um, and because my, my strength and my interest is polar history, um, I, this man, um, Eric, Eric Marshall, this book is about Eric Marshall, he was with Shackleton and Frank Wilde on the 1907 Nimrod expedition. 
and uh, no one had written a book about him. And he's an extraordinary character. Um, and I started researching him um, eight years ago. Uh, and it's taken that long to produce this book, but it's a very fine book. Um, a, a historian called Bo Riffenberg, polar historian, uh, came on board about a year before it was published because I discovered that he was also writing a book about Eric Marshall, but what had stopped him in his tracks was that he didn't have copyright for Marshall's Antarctic diary. And unbeknown to him and unbeknown to pretty well everyone, um, I, I not only had copyright to his expedition diary, but I had a unique diary that someone had lent me. Oh. So I, I was able to publish that. And this has just come out. It's called Shackleton's Critic. Um, and um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of, it's a tome of a book because it's got two diaries in there. So that's, um, that's just finished and out. Angie, where can people find, uh, is the, the books available online? Well, they're not on Amazon yet, purely because, um, you know, m the margins are tiny on, on books and Amazon takes such a huge chunk. Um, so at the moment, um, I've just got a web page, which is called shackletonscritic.co.uk, and it can be ordered there. But when I come to, so anyway, it, it's very easy. I send it all over the world, but South Africa is always a little bit more difficult. <laughs> but um, when I come to South Africa, I'm bringing up a, a, a bag of these books because uh -huh. I've got a lot of South Africans um, who are, are, are they're, they're, there's a huge amount of South Africans that are fascinated with polar history. Yeah. Um, and I, I've got to know so many of them. And, um, and so they, they've asked me to, to bring the book out for them, which I'll do. So, yeah, That's so fantastic. it went well. Wish you the best of luck for those two books. Thank uh, you. Christina, what can you tell us to, what, what should we be expecting? What, 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 are, what is entailed in the next 12 days in a year's time, if that makes sense? <laughs> well, I think um, your clients will be amazed at what they find. First, you're going to experience a couple of days in Ushuaia before embarkation, which is a very interesting little town. Um, um, and, and, and they will be stay, well, you will be staying at the Arakur Hotel, which is amazing. I stayed there. Um, it's fantastic. It's inside a natural reserve. So you are going to be able to explore a little bit of Ushuaia and the Beagle Channel and, and all the um, wildlife around it. And then uh, once you embark and, and, and the adventure starts, I think you'll be amazed and your clients will be amazed at what you find every single day you get out on 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 deck and, and you see a complete different icebergs and and as I said the first time I went to Antarctica you just see ice and you say where is the wildlife here and from nothing comes everything because you see one penguin there and then five and then ten then a whale and then albatross and, and it's just fantastic it's an explosion of wildlife around you it's just it's mind-blowing I, I really came back and I said oh gosh that wasn't long enough I want to go back you know, is if what you feel when you come back, and all our clients, I've been with uh, Cara and Angie for almost eight years now, and there isn't a single client who hasn't been amazed, and they all want to come back for more, or the Arctic, you know, it's just mind-blowing, really, really mind-blowing, so you will be amazed. Oh, I have no doubt, I have no doubt. And then lastly, before we say goodbye to you lovely ladies, I believe you've got a nice little um, tidbit for us, a little bit of a, an announcement to make in terms of the early bird discount. So, uh, can you yeah. tell our people a little bit more about that? Yeah, so um, we still, well, we still, we're offering that early bird discount. Um, it's not, it's not going to be ongoing for very long. So I would just really um, encourage people if they're thinking about Antarctica to take um, the opportunity of this 15% discount. It's expensive going down to Antarctica. And you, you, when you go down, you'll understand why, because it's very difficult to get to and it's so far away. Um, but um, 
it's a it's an expensive trip so i really encourage everyone just um to take advantage of this 15 percent discount um it's it we we can't because we always have the pressure of our ship operator we can't carry on offering it for too long but we really want um both pierre and andrew your clients to take advantage of it so well, that's um, we really yeah, really appreciate so that we, um, like just to, to clarify for everybody, everybody listening that early bird discount expired on the 31st of december and uh, as a result of the relationship with ice track they've reopened it up for a limited time the guys, please, if you're thinking about joining us, this is the time to do it. 15% is a lot. Uh, it's probably going to cover your airfare and a lot more. So please yeah. take advantage of this and uh, get all of myself or Andrew and uh, let's get these bookings in. Absolutely. Uh, it's, that's, that's, that's huge. So we, we appreciate the extension. That's amazing. And yeah, uh, very folks welcome. That, that would like to join us, if there's ever a time, now's the time. Well, as I say, I'm so excited about both you going down there because Andrew, I think years ago I said to you, you've got to go down to Antarctica uh, because you both wildlife, um, you know, guides and yeah. and this is going to this is a, di a different world, but something that really grabs you and um, and so I'm so thrilled. So I'm I'm really will jump through burning hoops to get you guys and all your wonderful clients down there. Fantastic. I've also I had a quick uh, Zoom recording with actually it wasn't that quick because Peter never never um, uh, speaks quickly. Uh, about 27 minutes of discussion with Prof Peter Neville, who's also going to be with us uh, in a year's time. Uh, he's an animal behavior professor, and Peter waxed yes. for, for 27 minutes on Zoom about uh, unique behavioral stuff, and we didn't even scratch the surface, and we'll be posting that discussion in a few weeks' time as the fourth uh, Antarctica Great. thing on social media. Yeah. Fabulous. Fabulous. Well, I'd be interested in, in hearing that. I have been following him, and I've been checking him out, and fascinating character. Yes, um, yes, yes. And, uh, I think he's going to bring a whole different dimension to this trip because, you know, that's going to be a first yeah. um, with his work. And, uh, yeah, that's exciting. Exciting. Well, Andrew, you've had him on a lot of your safaris where he's given this interpretation and, yeah. and the clients are just blown away about it, aren't they? I mean, well, just... When I first sat next to Peter on, a, on, a, on the back of a land cruiser in, uh, in wild Savannah, Africa, and I watched this guy talk about behavioral stuff but in such a and and engaging and palatable way and he had the entire vehicle of guests just eating out of his hand i just looked at this and i said i've got to get this guy in a uniform <laughs> and on safari with me as often as possible and he he's he awesome. really is awesome yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, ladies, thank you very much for taking the time to join us today and to tell us a little bit about what's going on and we are both extremely excited can't wait in fact, one of our social media posts yesterday is we've gone out and bought some craft beers called Shackleton, <laughs> just because of the name. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> uh, that's really great. And, um, and look forward to, to seeing, meeting you in person. I'm, oh, I'm you know, ready to come now. Yeah. Okay. Well, once again, thank you very much. And thank can't you. wait. I mean, this is going to be a long year just waiting to get on that ship. <laughs> okay. Well, we are always happy to answer questions. So anytime well, you or one of your clients have uh, a question, please let us know and we will be happy to give you all the information we have. That's yeah. Fantastic. I'll just add, um, guys, is that what's really important because it will take at least a year to get through all the books that one needs to read about Antarctica. So, you know, we've, we've got a fantastic reading list. It's really worth for, for your clients to get stuck into it now. Um, and of course, there'll be wonderful lectures on board. It's a little bit like going back to school, but it's the best school days you're going to have. Good so um, we'll be doing that too. Great. Thanks a lot, ladies. Much obliged. Okay. Thank you very much. Ciao. Ciao.